The Word of God is food for the spirit and health to the body. Through the spirit of revelation, we are guided into the wisdom and deep mysteries in His Word that make our lives vibrant and productive. Welcome to the Makere Gospel Church podcast. As you listen in, the glory of God will be quickened and activated in your life. Now, the Word. We've been looking at a series connected to the covenant of God. This morning, I want us to meditate upon something that is connected to walking in covenant with God. That is, we were created for His glory. We are fashioned, we are alive today to glorify God. We are alive, we have a purpose of manifesting the glory of God through our lives. I want us to establish this first of all by looking at a few foundational scriptures in the Bible. Let's look at Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. This is by way of introduction. I want to lay foundation to what the Lord has for us this morning. Colossians chapter 1, verse 16 says, For by him were all things created, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. For him. What is important in life is not just for us to seek our happiness, our comfort, and our well-being, what is foremost is that we glorify Him first. Our needs come second. Our comfort, our happiness comes second. The number one thing that we are here for is for Him to manifest His glory. If you can get that, that is the message for you this morning. You and I are created for the glory of God. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 37, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. God's glory, God's riches of his glory are, are manifold. We as Christians, are a telescope. A telescope does not create what is seen for a telescope. The telescope manifests what is there. The telescope magnifies what is there. With your naked eye, you can't see the galaxy. It is beautiful. They use a telescope called the Hubble Hubble telescope. It is an instrument that uh, NASA, an agency uh, owned by the U.S. that is involved in exploring uh, the space. This powerful telescope looks into the sky and they get those images. Now, you may not see them now, but they're there. But when you use the telescope, you're able to manifest this magnificent world out there. There are so many stars. So many planets. Some of the pictures there are awesome. They're so beautiful. But you can't see them using your naked eye. You need a telescope. That is why we are here on earth. That God may use us to manifest the riches of his glory. We are created by him for him. That God may use your life. He may use your circumstances. He may use your enemies. He may use your challenges. He may use your needs to manifest his glory. You see, people can't see God unless he's working through you. That's why the Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 2 that we've been given a name above every other name. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. As a church... 
We are called to use that name and cause situations to bow. That the riches of the glory of God may be manifest through us. Hallelujah. Of things in heaven, things in the earth, things under the earth. And that every tongue, hallelujah, every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Isn't that wonderful? That God has put here on earth to use your circumstance, to use your challenges, to use your life to manifest his glory. He has given you a name. When you use that name and you cause every knee to bow, you cause every tongue to confess that Jesus is the Lord, the riches of his glory are made manifest. It's like that telescope. People are able to see the power of God, the glory of God. Now, let's look at the scriptures and see this in action. In John chapter 9, I want us to read from verse 1 to verse 5. John chapter 9. Okay, the Bible says, John chapter 9, verse 1, it says, And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither has this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God, of the glory of God, should be made manifest in him. Hallelujah. I must work the works of him that sent me, while it is day, the night cometh when no man can walk. Jesus is walking, and as he's walking, he's intrigued by a situation. He fastens his gaze and looks at a man. He takes interest in this man, and because he's fixated with this man, the disciples look and see, what has captured his interest? And they see, oh, they probably knew the beggar. They probably knew him. And they knew his situation. They said, Lord, who's seen this poor man who's seen? Is it this man or his parents that he was born blind? It is a terrible, terrible experience to come out from your mother's womb blind. You've never seen your mother's face. You've never seen your hand. You've never seen your face. You've, you've never, you were born blind. It's a horrible, horrible experience. This man is probably about maybe in his 30s. He's an adult. Maybe 40s. He's a, he's a mature man. But he's blind. And because of his condition, his parents for some time tried to take care of him. But after a while, they got tired. They said, nah, you go and feign yourself. We are tired of taking care of you. So the man began to live on the street to beg for food. He became a beggar. He was disowned by his parents and friends. And Jesus, as he walked by, he saw him. And the disciple says, what is the cause of this situation? Jesus changed the emphasis from the cause to the purpose of the condition. He said, some things you waste your time to look for the cause. Some situations in your life, you may never know why they are there. Why you were born in Katanga. Why you were born blind. Why you were born crippled. Why you were born in a poor family? Why? You, you, sometimes you waste time looking for the reason why. The better way of approaching these things is look at the purpose. Some things are set up by God to use them to manifest his glory. As simple as that. You don't waste time asking questions, but why? Some of the things, we don't know exactly why. 
But we know in this life, the worse things are, the better for God to manifest his glory. When odds are up against you, when your enemies are more than you can count, when your enemies are stronger than you, when you are at your weakest time, that is the best time for God to manifest his glory. He will use your situation. He will use your condition. Jesus said, ah, let's not go there. This is an opportunity to manifest the glory of God. There are people here this morning that are battling with situations. And you're fighting enemies that are numerous and strong and they're giving you sleepless nights. Sometimes it's about why. Why is it me? Why is it that I am the one, you know, all the time having to face these things? You may spend all of your life asking the question, why? But this morning, change your focus. Look at it as an opportunity that God will use to manifest his glory through you. Because that is his agenda. We are made by him and for him. The Bible says in Romans that he is the porter we have a clay. Romans, Paul says, doesn't the porter have power over the clay? Of course he does. The porter can squash the clay in any shape. He can form the clay in any way he wants. Paul says he makes some for honor, some for dishonor. And don't ask why. The clay can't ask the potter, but why have you made me like this? Hmm? You, why have you made me like this? The clay can't ask the owner, the potter, those questions. Because the potter has power over the clay. And he can do with it whatever he wants. However, whatever he wants. Because we're made by him and for him. That is the eternal purpose of God, that he may be glorified in the earth. Hallelujah. Oh, I love it. Let me, let's look at this text a little bit more. Oh, my goodness. He says, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. Jesus gives us a wonderful example of a life of a believer. You've been sent to walk the works of God. That is to manifest the glory of God in your life. You are sent. You are not, uh, it's not, um, you're not here at coincidence. You, you have a mission. You have a purpose. I have a mission to use my life, use my family, Use everything I have for the glory of God. I look at life, I look at opportunities as a way of manifesting the glory of God. I have realigned my thinking. The car, everything I have, my health, must be used for his glory. I have been sent to do the works of God. Our works include manifesting the manifold riches of his glory. We don't live for ourselves. We live to glorify him. You might be here, you're saying, Pastor, I want to have a, a wife. I want to have a husband. Yes, but bottom line, why, why do you want a husband? Why do you want a wife? Why do you want to have children? Why do you want to have a good job? Bottom line, what is the motive? I'll tell you what should be. The bottom line should be that God may be glorified. That is the bottom line. Everything must score in that goalpost. Everything we do, everything we try to do in this life must score in the goalpost of glorifying God. 
He says, I have, I have been sent to do the works of God. Then he says, while it is a day, there is a period given to every man and woman. Jesus says, I've been given a day. He's describing his life figuratively in a day, in 12 hours. All of us have got a day to manifest the glory of God. We're not, in, we're not here to stay here permanently. Your time has been set by the maker. You have a day to serve the Lord. You have a day to manifest good. You have a day to do the works of God in this life. And night comes when no one can work. There will come a period when your time expires. And however much you want, you can't come back. Ah, you can't. But while it is a day, do the works of God. Manifest glory. Walk in obedience. Live a life that glorifies God. Whatever you do, the overarching motivation, the overarching factor should be how is God glorified in this. If I want to become a doctor or a teacher, if I want to become a businessman, why do I want to become a businessman? I hope from now on, the answer will be because I seek to glorify God through my career. It's not that I just become rich and wealthy. I own houses. I become famous. I become another Sudir. No, 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 no. That, that's not why you are made. You're not here for yourself. You're made by him and for him. For him. Jesus said, this man has been blind for 40 years. On purpose, that on this day, I will use this situation to manifest the glory of God. When God gives us a day, we all have a day. I'm speaking figuratively. Those 12 hours, those 12 hours are enough for you to fulfill all your assignments. You don't have to leave that law. If, you, if God says, yeah, fine. But even if it is 30 years, like Jesus, or 33 years, whatever day God has given us, you have enough time to fulfill the purpose of God in your life. You are, you've been given enough time to do the works of God in your life. Some of us have been called to work in hospitals. When we're there, we manifest the glory of God through love and mercy. Some of us have been called to serve as Sunday school teachers. That is our calling. We've been sent to do the works of God. In our day, you have a day. Those 12 hours, when there's light, there will come a time when you can't see you won't be able to do the works of God. So don't waste time. Amen? Don't waste time. Serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. You don't have all life, all time, all eternity. No, no, no. You've been given a day. All of us have a day. A fixed period of 12 hours. I'm speaking symbolically. Even Jesus, God in the flesh, had only 12 hours to do the works of God. Don't waste time. Get to work. Wherever God has placed you, manifest the glory of God. Be a different person. Walk with integrity. Walk with honesty. Walk in holiness. I know you are at the university and there's a lot of sin there. A lot of evil goes on there. But choose to be different and manifest the glory of God. Do the works of God, wherever you are. You work in your RIA. Only collect tax which is mandated. Don't take bribes. Manifest the glory of God in the tax 
body where well, you are employed. You have a day to do the works of God. Praise the Lord. If you have a pen, write this down. God cannot be exceptionally revealed in your life if you only fight ordinary battles, ordinary enemies, and you face ordinary circumstances. <laughs> let, me, let me say this one more time. God cannot be exceptionally revealed in your life if you only fight ordinary enemies ordinary battles and you face ordinary circumstances God needs the Pharaoh sometimes to manifest his glory God needs the Red Sea sometimes to show his glory God needs the River Jordan flowing overflowing at the banks you are forced to cross the river in a rain season God needs something formidable to bring out the riches of his glory. He needs a pharaoh. That's why he made a pharaoh to show the Egyptians that I am God. All those goods you have are buffeted, they're fake. I am God. The Bible says God judged the gods of Egypt. By the time Moses left Egypt, whoo, those gods were in Tatars. Even Pharaoh, by the time Moses left, died. He died in the Red Sea. Do you know that Pharaoh was also a god to the Egyptians? The Egyptians actually worshipped Pharaoh. But by the time Israel left Egypt, all those nations of Banange, these people have got a, a different god. By the time they came to Jericho, their knees were knocking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Said, how, how did they cross the Red Sea on foot? God needs sometimes exceptional enemies in your life to reveal his glory. This man was blind from birth. From birth. He's abandoned his parents became tired of feeding him. They sent him away from home. And when Jesus is coming, he does not make any effort. Many times when people would hear that Christ is coming, they cry and say, oh, son of David, have mercy on me, son of David. You know, they, will, they will reach out to him for healing. This man just sat there. Totally depressed. He had even stopped begging. He was quiet. Probably 40 years, 45, maybe. A line from the day he came from his mother's womb. Sabbath says, But God, who, who, who sinned? This is terrible. He said, don't waste time with those questions. This is so that I may have an opportunity to reveal the glory of God. In the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 1, verse 6, 1 Samuel, chapter 1, verse 6, the Bible speaks about Hannah. Hannah was barren. Now, you know, I think that if, if it was not for Penina, Hannah would have remained happy and content without having a, ch a child. She would not have been so worked up. But Penina, because the husband loved Anna. 
And Okana loved his his wife. He loved he loved he loved the Hannah with or without a child. He loved her. And she would have been contented living in a home without a child. Naye, God raised up an adversary. Yeah. God raised up an enemy. It's said in First Samuel chapter 1, verse 6. And her adversary also provoked her so for to make her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. I told you that sometimes God needs something exceptional to bring out his best game. <laughs> God did something exceptional to bring out his best game. He said that this adversary provoked her day after day, day after day. She would have been happy just to be married. But you know, if it was not for Penina, the prophet in our womb, would not have been born. There was a prophet in our womb. Yeah. And God needed someone like Benina to push. She made her life so miserable. There was a prophet in her womb. That prophet to be born, there had to be an enemy. Sometimes God raises up powerful enemies in your life to bring forth something great in your life. To give birth something you never even expected. Some may not have been born if it was not for Penina. Penina was the tool, was the adversary that God used she would make her life so difficult and make almost trying to tell her, leave the home, go. You have no place here. You have no place. You don't belong here. So sometimes there is something in your life that needs adverse circumstance. There is something that must come and sit in your life. And as you cry out to God, God moves miraculously. And something exceptional is born through you. <laughs> Hallelujah. A great prophet was born because there was a great adversary in the life of this woman, Hannah. Now, I want to show you one more texts in John chapter 11 verse 7 John 11 it says then after that saith the disciples let us go into in fact let's begin from verse 1 this is also a very interesting incident uh, John chapter 11 uh, from verse 1 now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death. By the way, understand this. Not all sickness will cause your death. Even if it is HIV. People get healed from HIV. Not all sickness, not all sickness in God's plan for your life can kill you. While others died of covid you survive it. But hear this. There is a sickness that will take your life. 
Bible says that Elisha had a sickness that led to his death. Elisha, the man who raised the dead, performed miracles. There is a sickness that one day you and I will take us home. Even if you go to any hospital in the world, you may never get cured. But not every disease, even if it's cancer, can take your life. There is a particular one in God's time that may take you home. So the Bible says, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. He was told that um, Adaras is sick, very sick. He did not bother to respond. He could have healed Lazarus from a distance. Taina Puddha. He didn't have to come back. He could have spoken the word where he was and healed him. He didn't. He didn't. He spent a few days ignoring the problem. Then we read in verse, um, verse 5, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. And after that, saith he to the disciples, Let us go into Judea. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Verse 9, I love this. Jesus answered, I there not twelve hours, I there not twelve hours in the day. Remember the day? Remember the day? We all have a day. And then there are 12 hours a day. If any man walk in the day, if you walk in your day, he will not stumble because he sees the light of this world. Now, Judea had become very hot for Jesus. They tried several times to kill him, but they did not kill him. And now he's telling disciples, let's go back to Judea. Because Lazarus is dead. Disciples said, eh, don't, don't go back there. They try to stone you. They try to kill you. Don't go back there. He says, no, no, no. I have 12 hours. Hallelujah. I have a day assigned to me. And if I walk in that day until I fulfill my assignment, no one can kill me. Now I'm paraphrasing. But that's what he meant. I must work the works of him that sent me in my day. I have 12 hours. My time is running out. I need to fulfill my course. I'm here to tell you, until you fulfill the assignment, you will not die. You will not die. Walk within your day. Understand your assignment. Walk within your assignment. Discover the will of God for your life. Walk in it. Even if you are working in Sudan, now where there's a civil war, if you're there on God's assignment, you will not die. No, you will not die. No. Says, no, I have my 12 hours. Say, no, 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 don't go there. No, 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 I have 12 hours. I don't want to waste time. I must work the works of him who sent me. Now, John 11, verse 40. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldst believe, thou shouldst see the glory of God. This miracle was so powerful that the Bible says many Jews believed on the Lord. When Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, that miracle is one of the greatest miracles in the entire Bible. In my opinion, there's no miracle greater than that. How do you raise someone from the dead who has been buried for four days. 
if someone dies and within an hour you pray for them, yeah, it's a miracle. But when you have been buried for four days and the flesh begins to fall off from the bones and all that is there is just a mess, that miracle, apart from the miracle of Christ rising from the dead, there is no miracle like that in the Bible. The Bible says when that happened, many Jews believed on him. In fact, there was so, there were so many people who came to Christ that the Jews got concerned. And they said, we have to kill this man. The Pharisees, the leaders, the religious leaders said, the whole world is following him. And Caiaphas, the high priest Caiaphas said, don't you know it's expedient that one man die to save a nation? From that day, they began to plot seriously to kill Jesus because that miracle touched the nation. But many Jews believed on him. In John chapter 12, it is said the Jews began to plan to kill both Jesus and Lazarus because whatever Lazarus walked, it was a walking miracle. This man was, he was dead four days in the grave. Look at him, he's walking. Everywhere he went, he was preaching the gospel. He was manifesting the glory of God. Hallelujah. It's amazing. The primary goal of God in this life is that he wants to receive maximum glory. Hallelujah. Maximum glory. Oh, bless the Lord. Let me read one more text and then we're going to pray. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 27. First Corinthians 10, verse 27. If any of them that believe bid you to a feast, and ye be disposed to go. Whatever is said before you eat, asking no question for conscience sake. But if any man say unto you, This is offered in sacrifice unto idols, eat not for his sake that showed it, for conscience sake. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Conscious, I say, not thy own, but of the other. For why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? Now listen. For if I by, by grace be a partaker, why am I evil spoken of for that for which I give thanks? Whether therefore you eat or you drink, whatsoever you do, do all for what? To the glory of God. Whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. Paul begins that text by showing us that sometimes we choose not to eat or to eat, uh, eat based on how we can glorify God. Sometimes if you're invited to someone's home and the person says, yeah, you're welcome, Please enjoy the meal. Even if the home is the home of a Muslim or whatever, pray for the food sanctified eat. But if the person says uh, that chicken was first offered to go to Chibuka or Makasa or Rubare, for his sake, don't eat. So sometimes we don't eat because we seek to glorify God. Sometimes we eat because we glorify God. Whatever you do, whether eating or not eating, drinking or not drinking, whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. <laughs> Our decisions to take a job or not take a job, the bottom line is, is God glorified? Someone may offer a job to, for you, a good job, but he insists, I must have sex with you. Sometimes you turn your back 
to a good job because you seek to glorify God. You may take a job which pays less. You earn less money. It's below your qualification, but you are seeking to glorify God. Everything we do, bottom line, is, is God glorified. Am I glorifying God in this? If you take your children to certain school, why do you take them to that school? Are you just prioritizing the academic standards? Don't you know some schools have an agenda? There are schools that are promoting homosexuality. Yes, some of these powerful international schools where you have many foreigners, Europeans, some of them, they have a curriculum that promotes homosexuality. Now you want to be, have a child in an international school where they speak very good English. They, they, people who go there are, are rich and friends. You, you want to fit in also. But you're risking the future of your child. I'd rather you take your child to a lesser school because that child will have a chance to keep the faith and by that you will glorify God. So in life, as we make decisions, the, the most important thing to consider is how is God glorified? Is God glorified in this? If I choose to leave Uganda, and work in Dubai. Where are you going to Dubai? Is the bottom line you're seeking to glorify God or you're just looking for money? See, everything we do should be for the glory of God. Everything. 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 You want to get married. Why you want to get married? Just to be among the people who are married. They, they call themselves the honorable. Honorable. You want to also be honorable? Yeah. What's, what's, is that all you want? Or you plan to use your home to serve the Lord? You want to use this chance of being a wife or a husband to glorify God. If that is your motive, then you're in the right track. Thank you for listening. We hope that you've been strengthened with His might and fortified by the Word of God. Please make sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube pages at Full Gospel Map. Goodbye.